Hello everyone, this is Kosher Bacon. Welcome back to Minecraft 113. You know, that looks really ugly, that house. Uh, I got a couple things I want to do today. I want to find some pigs. I want to turn down the music a little. I do like the music in this game, it's very nice. I'm going to fix up this house, make it look better, because it's kind of ugly. And by kind of, I mean very. So we're going to fix up the house, then we're going to go find those pigs from earlier, lead them over to the pig pen somehow. I believe you can do do it with wheat, or maybe it was carrots. I forget the breeding material for pigs. Uh, so let's go take a look at our building blocks. We've got some oak wood to spare. We can move all this in there. I don't need this dirt right now. Stripped oak can go in there. So can this be converted into... Yeah, it can be converted into planks. So both the bark and the stripped log versions can be converted into their respective planks, which is good. So how do we want to make this look better? I think cobblestone down over there. Then just quickly like that might look better. There we go. I think that looks a lot better now. Maybe. Um, I'm really bad at building. Okay. Step number two, we are running very, very low on food. So let's go get some pigs. I think if we just have some wheat, they'll follow us, but we should also take some seeds or break some grass to get some seeds if that's not the right thing. Worst case scenario, we can ditch the pigs and just get some cows. Cows are usually better anyways. I see cows up over there. But yeah, here's the pigs. I, I mean, I'm kosher bacon. Of course I'm going to go for the pigs. Come on. Yeah, you follow. Alright, we need at least one more. Is it following? I don't think wheat is the right food for these guys. Maybe it was carrots now that I think about it. Alright, plan B. Go for cows. Hey, llama. You following me? Walking all glitchy. Cows are up over there. We'll move them over to the pen area. Seriously, these derpy things. Like, they're gonna fall in that hole. Pathfinding is so... Oh, wow. They actually didn't fall in. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, yeah, so the grass has grown in quite quickly, actually. Did they up the tick speed, maybe? Come on. Come on, I wasn't walking that fast. Follow, you dum-dums. There you go. Herding animals is one of the more annoying tasks in this game, but it's pretty necessary for farming. In you go, my cows. I did not mean to feed you. To breed. Advancement. Okay, so that's good. Now what are we gonna do? Well, I got ourselves a beetroot. It's night time, so we're gonna go sleep. Um, yeah, like right now, because we don't have windows. So we want to get some sand, and we want to go uh, mine some stuff. So I think let's go get the sand first. Here, for us, let's empty out our inventory. Keep the logs on us just in case. I've gotten so un unused to the uh, control system. Alright. Let's go pick a direction and walk that way. So we've gone that way for a bit. Um, that way's a mountain, so let's go this way. Then we'll go down and explore this cave system if we haven't already. That's pretty weird. 
Like, uh, look over there. It unloads that. Is that part of a chunk border? Yeah, look at that. That's a chunk border right there. Mm. And perfect. The shovel's about to break. Yep. Okay, got a bunch of sand. Let's go explore for just a bit longer. We got food. Oh, we have a river. And we got fish. Look at that. So, let's go F5 mode for this. So this is the old Minecraft swimming animation. You just walk into the water, and you're holding jump, and that allows you to jump around. Once you get submerged, though, you enter the swimming animation. The longer you spend in water, the clearer the water becomes. Like, you probably noticed as I was swimming around in here that it got clearer. You can also surface again. Uh, you have to stay above water or outside of water for a couple seconds in order for your oxygen meter to fully refill. So the torch trick, the bucket method, those no longer work. Um, while swimming, you can press shift and you'll rise and crouch. Oh wait, I'm no longer doing that. Hold on, how does the controls work again? So I'm sprinting while moving, that does not I'm sprinting while submerged, then I start doing the swimming animation. Then you press shift while it's doing the sprinting swimming animation, and you go back up. Alright, it's a little janky, but I think it's usable. Control makes you go down, shift makes you go up. Yeah, we got a bunch of cod, I think these are. I'm not sure what they are. Salmon. I don't know the new types of fish, what they are and what they do. Uh, we also have some kelp, I think. What's this? Doesn't look like we get it if we break it. So we're probably gonna need shears to harvest the stuff. Alright, pretty cool. Uh, how does it control in first person? Controls decently well. Yeah, you move decently fast, I guess. So you can also go fishing without a fishing rod, then. Like, there's no reason to get a fishing rod at this point. No, no, there absolutely is. You can fish up junk. I imagine auto-fishers are still working just fine. I'm probably not going to build an auto-fisher. It's a little too good. Like, I'm fine with automatic farms, but that's just sort of like... Uh, build the thing, AFK... Get yourself like a mending book and some XP giving system like fishing itself. And just come back in an hour and boom, tons of loot like mending books and power five bows that you don't even need. Alright, let's keep exploring. I should really get a map to do this, but we need sugarcane to do that. I'm not too concerned about getting lost. We got a nice swamp biome over here. Oh, look at that. The water in the swamp biome is different. Squids can kill themselves just by swimming into shallow areas. Good to know. Alright, so there's a lot less squid in the water now that there's fish, I'm, bet I'm betting. Can you enter swimming mode in a one thick area? It doesn't look like it. You can do it uh, over here. Can you then transition into a one block high area? You can. The player model is like 0.6 blocks tall and wide. But then you can't really do that. I like that this is animated. I think this is coral or kelp. And yeah, your vision does become clearer. Look at that. Of course. We have low oxygen, so 
we have to keep surfacing and then it doesn't go as well. So yeah, that's really cool. I like the new mechanics. Yeah, we can make pumpkin seeds with these and get infinite amount and trade them to villagers for infinite em emeralds. No. No. At least we got some more food. That's honestly the main point of this trip was to go scavenge for more supplies. Also, check out the biomes, see what we got here. Because this might be a fun area to run around in at night with some potion effects and go hunt slimes, for example, if we need slime blocks or something. Yeah, there goes the axe. Alright, let's head back. So. Uh, I was a little confused because I thought we were going to get updated textures, like a bunch of new updated textures uh, with this update, but apparently Jappa, the developer, or maybe his name's Jappa, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, isn't quite done with them yet, so for now we still have the classic Minecraft textures. However, at some point in the future they plan on rolling it out, first as a resource pack, then as a default thing for the game. So it looks interesting. I've seen a couple of them, and I don't hate them. They look interesting. Um, Minecraft is sort of changing as a game, obviously, like, this is different from any version we've seen before, it almost feels like modded in a way, but I really like it. Rivers now have a lot more life to them, oceans are apparently really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to see what direction the game goes in in the future, and I'm looking forward to playing it. I think it's great that Mojang releases these updates for free, you know? Like, they could, they could have gone a different way back in the beginning. They could have said, hey, each update's gonna be a DLC and you're gonna have to download it and stuff. But no, just a free update to a game I paid $25 for once. No, micro no microtransactions, no uh, cosmetic stuff for money, no V-Bucks, none of that. No publishing a AAA game that's half completed and doesn't work right, and then some of the bugs are fixed in future DLCs you have to download. Bethesda don't. <clears throat> oh, hey, skeletons. We don't have a shield on us, either. Why did we go out like this? No bucket, no shield. That's fine. We are fine. Everything is going to be okay. Uh, I don't know where I am. That's a little confusing. By confusing, I mean a little scary, but I think we'll be fine. A big supply of sand and clay down over here, wherever here is. I can now swim in water to help avoid mobs. Some mobs won't float anymore, like zombies. They'll actually drown and form the new drowned mobs. So that should be cool to mess with. I think there's going to be a new type of mob spawner that people are going to do where they create drowned mobs via, like, uh, having a zombie spawner that... Oh, hey, here's that... Oh. So this is that cave system I dug my way out of, which means home is that way. So anyway, people are probably going to... Yeah, here's where that creeper got me that I mentioned the other episode. Here's where our stuff was. Okay, I know where I am. So people are probably going to make spawners where the... Uh, it's a zombie spawner, but it's completely submerged in water, so it creates drowned. And maybe it's flowing water? I, I'm not sure how I'd design it yet. I might try and design one of those. Not copy someone else's, but build one of my own. Yep, yeah, there's our pen. Yep, here's the clearing. I don't like spamming torches all over the ground, but it's important for our safety right now. Yeah, so, apparently item frames can now- oh yes they can. Oh yeah. We're... They're still a little glitchy when they break, but that's fine. That's great! Another item from Quark, or another feature of Quark, added into the base game. I'm happy. Uh, do we have a, Can we make a map? We cannot. We need sugarcane for that, and that's on the roof now. Yep, you can see it glitching through over there. Yep, there it is. No. Very good, they're making more babies for me. So you just... Eh. There we go. Let's go explore that direction. Alright, 
some stupid marks. So it's not too hard to get. Huh, cool, your character respects the animation and the inventory screen just like flying. It's a little difficult to get it going, but if you get it going, good. Given how I sleep every night, I'm probably not gonna see a phantom until I want to. Okay, let's see if we can't make a dr uh, drowned mob happen. So we got some zombies here, right? If we lead them into the water, what happens? We get our shield ready. Okay, zombies no longer uh, do the bobbing thing that I do, so they're now down there. And apparently they convert to drowned. So they probably have a uh, meter similar to ours. Will zombies swim up to get me? No, they will stay down. Okay. How fast are zombies compared to me? I seem to be able to work around them even while underwater, so they must be pretty slow. Although, was that me swimming? Because, like, if I enter swim mode, yeah, it's no contest. We might get a trident from one of these guys if we're lucky. Alright, so this is the new drowned mob. Um, yeah, taking a screenshot of that. That's the thumbnail for this video. So the drowned does move around pretty quickly. Do they dive? Obviously they're drowned, so they most certainly don't have a drowning meter. But if I'm down over here, are they going to try and get to me? Looks like they try to. Yeah, they definitely change their altitude in the water. So I'm gonna drop some rotten flesh. They can pick up items like zombies. I was hoping for a trident. Oh, that's right, there's new item water mechanics. But we'll get to that in a while. We need to get to the nether before we can really play around with that. So we have the attention of zombies. Uh, there is actually a detection mechanic in Minecraft where wearing armor, running around, and sprinting makes you easier to detect than not wearing armor. I believe there was actually um, one of Vex's super hostile maps where I abused, well not abused, but where I did use the uh, detection mechanics to my advantage in order to get through an area that I couldn't fight through because I didn't have good enough gear. So these guys do not want to come after me, or they're just really slow. Come on. Come on, dude. Join the party. Okay, now they're all down there. Now we wait. That guy holding the shovel. If he turns drowned, is he still gonna be is he still gonna have that shovel, I wonder? It's like we all float all over again. It's, uh, I think that was the Blue Wool Dungeon from uh, Vex's... Not the Blue Wool. Yeah, he still has the shovel. Maybe that was the blue. Light blue. Like the th second or third or fourth dungeon, depending on which one you went to, from uh, Vex's Super Hostile map waking up for 1.47. That was a fun one. And by fun, I mean horrible. It's a water level in 1.47. It would be interesting to play through it. Oh, that guy actually dropped his shovel. Neat. It would be interesting to play through it with the new swimming mechanics. So this is a really cool looking mob. I mean, just look at that guy. Does a decent amount of damage. That was me in full iron armor. It took about a heart of dam a heart of health. I think they have the same amount of health as me, or similar amount. Those items, items are supposed to 
bounce water now? I don't understand new item physics. I'm gonna wait till it's morning again, though. Go get him, boy. I love that the dogs now chase skeletons. Even though I didn't tame any of the wolves, they, uh, they're they still friendly. Ow, no, my cows. Yep, three new babies. That cow's all jumping around, being crazy. Alright, we got a bunch of skeletons over here. Fight, fight. Fight. We got going nuts. So here we actually have a small pool of water. Know we need some blocks in here anyway, so let's just go dig this out and use it as an artificial lake. So the blocks bounced up as we mined them, right? Let's see here, let's test this out. Might as well test this out, but first let's go set this up. Diving thing is a little weird. I think it's just gonna take some time to get used to it. Okay, so item physics in water. If I toss an item in water, it sinks. If I toss an item from within water, it floats, it sinks. Why is that one floating? Or why is that stack floating? So items try to float in water, by the looks of it. Except for those two, for some reason. Does it try to take into account physics? Why, is some, why are some of them floating but others are not? Does it have to do with depth? Maybe? Here, now the water will be three feet deep. Or maybe because it's flowing water, technically, down here. Like, uh, that's not whole water down here. So we got to, um... We almost have to build our own artificial thing just to test it, don't we? Yeah, I think that's what we're going to have to do. I might go into test world for this. You know what? Let's do that. And okay, we just did a quick cut. Now we're in test world. Uh, remember this giant thing? Yeah, we're going to use this to test item physics in water. So, this is water, yeah. Uh, slowly we get slightly better night vision. Look at that particle effect, though. That looks crazy. But that's not what we care about right now. Uh, we care about the music. So that glass is sinking. But if I'm in here and I toss it, it also sinks. But if I toss it upwards, if I toss it, now it wants to float. So sometimes items seem to want to float, other times they don't. Because this is all source blocks. So, I might have to pause and look this up on the wiki then, because that's inconsistent. Like, here. Trying for a large sample size over here, trying to figure out what's up. And look, they're all sinking. Yeah, just look at that. How's my frame rate down here? About as good as I was expecting. Maybe, actually. Can you enter swimming mode when you're in creative? I don't think you can. No, you can't. You always have to be moving for swimming mode to work, though. 
Oh, so look at that. They did come back up. So items try to float, but they could sink for a bit before that happens. How does that work? Here, let's observe. Okay, yeah, now look at that. They're starting to float up. Weird. Because, like, now we're flying. So items try to float in water. Cool. Exit first person. So it falls for a bit. Then at around this point over here, it stopped. So it fell for a decent bit, and I imagine you could probably make an item cannon or something that threw it down deeper. But after a certain point, looks like maybe eight, nine, perhaps ten blocks, it starts floating back up again. Because there's no items down down over here by the fence gates. Are the fence gates waterlogged right now? Looks like not, because waterlogged blocks can have water placed within them. And water will flow out. Here, let's maybe not do it in the place we care about. Can fence gates not be waterlogged? I thought they could be. Maybe to waterlog it, you gotta place the fence. No. So fence gates are not waterloggable? Oh, cool. Look at that. Hold on. Water flew into this because there was a thing there. Water can flow out of it through there. Alright, so I think I have a better understanding of how water logged blocks work. And items do try to float in water, so what else do we want to test while we're in test world? Uh, let's test out the bubble columns. Need magma. Magma blocks and soul sand. Okay, and let's just do some glass. Let's get out of this area. Alright, all right. so I've built uh, water columns over here, so the way it works is uh, one of these draws things down, the magma blocks, so items will actually sink in magma blocks, but they will float, or they will be forced to float in soul, stand, soul sand things, and people as well. Can you actually escape from this? I don't know if you can escape from this. Eh. Like, um... Here. Slash game mode zero? Oh, it no longer works. You need to do survival. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, let me try that again. I thought I tabbed. I guess I got tabbed twice now. Okay, so the command's GUI is a little different. Uh, that probably means all my command structures in this world might be broken again. Uh, death gains definitely broken. Anyways, so let's go back to this. Um, yeah, let's give ourselves diamond armor, because why not? Just for the sake of the damage protection. So now we're in survival mode, right? This brings us down, right? So we enter swim mode and we try to escape and... How did we do that? So you can definitely get out of it then. It does draw you in, but you can enter swim mode, and in this case I'm uh, looking at the corner, uh, just sprint, pressing my sprint button, which enters my swim mode, and up. And then I press my jump button, and it's easy enough to get out. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Anything else I want to play around with? Um, I think let's go cut back into our survival world. Okay, and we're back. We're in our survival world again. Uh, so that's how water mechanics work. Items will try will sink for a little bit, then they'll start floating again. Um, we also did a little bit of experimenting with how magma blocks and soul sand affect it, and how it is to swim in that, so that's cool. Still a bunch of stuff to play around with, though. But anyways, I think that will actually do it for this episode. Apologize if it's a bit shorter, because I'm not running a 30-minute timer like I do with, um, like I did with, say, Half-Life 2. It can be hard for me to tell how long an episode's gonna be, especially when I'm cutting stuff out. So I just sort of play till I get bored, and hopefully it doesn't take, it isn't too short. But, like I said, that will do it for now. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you again in the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.